uh, let's start. So uh, <clears throat> my talk today is uh, about to, to enable the, the exploring to enable the NVD on cache and what the potential performance improve uh, we can observe. So uh, my name is Coley. Uh, I live in Beijing, China, and I worked in the story and network team for Suse Labs. Uh, I maintained MD read, device mapper, bcache, and the MAD for Suse Linux kernel. And also, uh, I am the, the bcache sub subsystem maintainer uh, for upstream Linux kernel. OK, so uh, what is bcache? What is bcache? Uh, indeed, I use this page for this year is the third years for my talk. Uh, bcache is a Linux block layer cache. It makes faster block device such as uh, SSD named Deem to act as a cache for one or more slower hard drives. Uh, that is. Uh, when we use the bcache, a virtual device is created, and uh, the I/O on this virtual device will go either into cache device SSD or the backend device hard drive or uh, distributed storage cluster, depends on the cache mode. For the write back cache, the cache the data will go into the cache device. For the write through mode. Uh, the cache the data will stay in cache and uh, go to backend device both. And for the write around the mode, the, for the write request, the data won't stay on cache device, just uh, directly go into the backend device. Indeed, that uh, we have the mode very similar to read around, but we, we don't call it a read around, just, uh, just uh, because for, for Read. It's uh, it's quite hard to 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 run the cache. We just uh, avoid to load the cache. Uh, the cache miss the data. This is some uh, right intent workload the user required for this. But this is not a explicit cache cache mode. And uh, for the 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 core concept of bcache is the B tree, the B plus tree of the bcache. Uh, we use the B plus tree to index the cached blocks. And the, each cached block, we use a structure B key to represent it. That's the extent means uh, the LBA and uh, the length of the data, and uh, a, a bunch of the BK combined within a B tree node, and uh, many of the B tree nodes combine a B tree, uh, the B plus tree, uh, for the B cache, and the the leaf node, the leaf node of B cache, uh, B plus tree is quite large. Default is uh, 512 KB. Uh, so do the linear search in uh, B tree node is very slow. So B tree uh, B cache use another binary tree to accelerate the search. And if the search hit in the uh, binary tree, that means the searching key must contain in some range uh, from the uh, heat key. That's uh, the range is just a cache line, and the within this cache line, just do the linear search. And this method is quite fast, and uh, I guess maybe this is the the one of the major reason why the B cache performance is uh, around 10 percent faster than other open source uh, cache solutions okay and uh, for uh, each b tree leaf node 
the key is append. This is uh, different from the device mapper. The device mapper theme pool also use a B tree, but uh, uh, their key is uh, replaced in places. But for B cache, no. Uh, B cache just append the new added key on the tail of the leaf node. And every time when the B cache need to read in the B tree node, they just try to iterate all the keys and uh, filter out the outdated keys and only uh, keep the up-to-date keys in memory. So that's different. Uh, the, the reason is uh, if the in-place replacement is avoided, the right uh, amplification can also be avoided. So it's quite friendly to the SSD. Yeah. So uh, a full leaf node may contain more than 21,000 BK records at most. And uh, for each leaf, if all the data are small, random write for 4 KB, then each leaf may index around the 40, uh, around the 80, more than 84 megabyte data. So that that's a lot. And uh, the, there's something special that is uh, in the B tree is uh, the, the internal, the internal B tree node, not a leaf node. The internal B tree node uh, is uh, replaced in uh, is replaced uh, in place, and uh, the the leaf node right to the leaf node will go into the journal firstly. But for the internal nodes, no, they just uh, replace in place and uh, directly overwrite the B tree node on the SSD. And uh, here I will show a simplified uh, cache the data insert order. Uh, to explain that the metadata related IOs affect overall performance recognized. For a write request, that is a BIO with 30 pages go into the Bcache code. And the first, the, the, the Bcache code will write this block on the cache device, that is SSD. And at the same time, a key will be generated and insert into the B plus tree. Only after the key is stored, then this BIO request can be completed. Now, otherwise, otherwise, even with the synchronization uh, request and the following read request may be missed because uh, the key is not inserted. So the BIO must be completed after the key is inserted. And the inserted um, means one, uh, one of the two conditions can be treated as inserted. The one is uh, the B tree goes into the, the journal space on the cache. Another one is the B, uh, the B key goes into the B plus tree and is stored on the SSD cache. Now one of, one of the two conditions happen. We think the B, B key is uh, inserted. Uh, the 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 cached data uh, so the metadata after the cached data goes into uh, SSD the metadata will hit SSD twice uh, the, the the first time the first time the B key will go into the journal uh, so even the B key is inserted into memory 
but not flushed to the SSD. If there is a power failure, we will lo we will lose this data. So the first, the, the, the BK go into the journal, and then there is the reference count in increase for this journal entry, unless the B tree node flushed to the SSD, the reference count decreased, and we can ignore the journal entry. So you can see that uh, to insert a data, to, ca to, to cache a data on SSD, we need to hit three times on SSD, and uh, two of them are about metadata. So for the random and the small writes, the metadata performance matters the overall performance. And uh, not, not only the runtime performance, the B tree structure also matters the boot time. So in my very extreme benchmark testing, after uh, 10 hours continuously writing one sector block numerous to the cache device, uh, there might be around uh, 40 gigabyte, more than 40 gigabyte space occupied by the Bcache B tree. Uh, when the system reboot, the Bcache need to check every node of the B tree to make sure there is no B tree node corruption. And then uh, they also need to iterate all the buckets and B tree to count the dirty sectors. So before Linux version 5.9, in my testing, it will take 15 minutes, 50, 15 minutes to complete the Bcache registration. That's terrible. Uh, right now, it's, it's better because uh, after 5.9, we have uh, multiple threads checking in parallel. So it's around five minutes. Yeah, around five minutes to do the B plus tree checking and a dirty bark is counting. So even uh, right now, we spent five more minutes, but for the boot time, five minutes is still too long. So if we can access all the metadata faster, we can make the system boot up faster. Okay, now we have uh, the MAD, the non volatile dual inline memory model comes. Uh, this new, yeah, it's new. Although we have uh, a medium for very long time, but the the product like Intel Optin DCPM uh, with a reasonable price and a reasonable performance and and a popular on the market, that's a very new media. And this media shows up makes me recall. 10 years ago that when the SSD start to be popular on market, we chance to use uh, the SSD to cache hot data for hard drive. So right now, maybe it's also a good time to use the MAD to cache data for Bcache. So, on my testing server, that's a Lenovo Sync System SR650. Uh, it happens to have uh, 256 gigabyte uh, Apache Pass DIN. 
That's the first generation of the Intel AMD. From the Intel white paper, it is said that the Optin uh, AMD percent memory is 10 times faster than their Optin SSD. But in general, in general, in my testing for the NVMe interface SSD on my hands, I see that the performance gap is 100 times, not, not 10 times. Maybe just because the Optin SSD is really faster. So I, I think how to cache the hot data on MAD for Bcache. The simplest method is to store the metadata on MAD. I'm sorry, Kali. Yeah. Can I interrupt you or do you take question only at the end? Can I interrupt you now? Yeah. So you said that in your testing, you found uh, that the performance uh, of the uh, obtain is even better than what advertised on the marketing uh, specs. You, you found a better performance than what Intel says or a worse performance? Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, I mean that uh, Intel announced uh, their Optin percent memory is 10 times faster than their Optin SSD. But for yeah. my testing, uh, for my testing, in general, the NVMe SSD on my hands, the NVDIM is 100 times faster. So way more than what they say. Uh, the reason is uh, uh, the Intel's Optin SSD in general is 10 times faster than other NVMe SSD. Okay, okay, right, I see, I see. Because you're comparing with something that is already fast. Like yeah. You're comparing with general SSD. Yeah. Okay, thank so you. I, thank you very much. I just identify uh, the the information difference between the Intel's white paper and the and the performance number I have. Yeah. So in general, the NVMe SSD is around 300 times faster than SATA hard drive, and uh, the the AMD is 100 times faster than the NVMe SSD. So if we combine the AMD with Bcache, what will happen? Uh, at this moment, the MAD space, it is big, but it's still small. I mean that uh, uh, for each DIMM, it's uh, 256 gigabyte or 512 gigabyte. That's big comparing to DRAM, that's big, but uh, comparing to current SSD, it's not big enough. So, Quite nature that we think to store the metadata on MAD. And indeed, for small random read write, the performance for metadata is very important. So maybe we can find uh, some potential improvement for the Bcache. Okay. Uh, so if we want to test the feasibility, we need to modify the Bcache device layout. Uh, currently, the Bcache layout is very simple. Uh, at the very beginning, that's a super block of Bcache. And uh, this super block is static. It means that uh, once the super block is created, it is very rare to update the super block at this location. And uh, follow the super block, the, 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 the yellow area is, uh, the dark yellow area is uh, for journal storage. Uh, normally it, it is around 500 megabyte. That's a static area. And we, we are sure that uh, all journal entries will be stored here in the round robin behavior. But after uh, the journal area, the metadata 
and data are mixed allocated on the SSD. So uh, we, we need to hack, we need to do some very tricky hack to control, to only allocate the B3 node at the head area of the cache device. And then we can create an MD linear device. The linear device to put the MVD on the head part and the SSD on the second part. And then we can uh, evaluate the performance improvement from uh, MVD. This is quite tricky. Uh, because the Bcash, uh, the Bcash design does not distinguish the the layout of different type of data. They just make sure that uh, the B tree node uh, will all always be reserved for enough space, but they don't control where the space is. So uh, I just uh, I I I hacked the code. Uh, I hacked the code on the allocation on, uh, on the allocation because uh, the Bcash at the, at the very beginning, there's no free space to allocate from Bcash. If someone wants to request a bucket to allocate, uh, they will trigger something like the garbage collection to select a bucket to be invalidated and insert to the to one of a list for different type of data. So my hacking is uh, just to when invalidate the buckets, I control the rate. The most of the rate uh, will be invalidated for B3 node if the uh, if I know the LBA that belongs to the MAD area, and uh, I try to allocate, uh, I try to invalidate the buckets from the SSD area for a normal data allocation. But uh, that's that's kind of uh, dynamic rate. That means when the when the Bcash run and run and run, the current hacking uh, cannot control all the B3 bucket in, uh, in the MADM area and all the normal data buckets in SSD area, they will start to mix it together. Sorry, uh, Colin? Uh, yeah. Uh, on the chat, we have uh, a, a question by Oliver. Uh, do you still need a full journal if your B3 is on an NVDIM? Uh, okay, uh, this is, uh, this is uh, something of the topic, but I will uh, explain that. Uh, for, for this talk, this is a POC that we can gain some performance advantage from the NVDIM. Uh, but the real development is not this way. Uh, that's quite complicated. And uh, we find, we find the MAD, even the MAD is uh, byte addressable. Some of its performance behavior is very similar to SSD. Uh, that is, uh, if we update every, every byte, the performance will be terrible. So, so we still need some kind of method to update uh, the data in batch. And, and in the meantime, we need to make the consistency of the overall data hierarchy. That means even we use MAD by the DAX interface, we still need something very similar to the journaling. Maybe simpler, uh, but we still need that. 
Yeah, the, the, that's the answer to the question from Jinavi. Uh, th that's the answer, yeah. And right now, uh, let me uh, continue the topic. So uh, when the Bcash runs longer and longer, uh, the control to distribute the metadata and the regular data uh, will be weaker and weaker for my hacker. So from this chart, we can see that uh, the green, the green part, is a uh, valid range. Valid range uh, is so uh, my hacking can still control the data distribution uh, from the MADM or SSD. And the uh, the second part, the that covered by a right line, that is invalid range. That range is, means uh, the, the, the performance number cannot be used because they mix it together. And from the valid range, we see that uh, if we put most of the Bcache metadata on MAD, uh, the IOPS increase around uh, 1700 in average. And indeed, uh, I see at the very beginning, uh, it's around like 1600 at the best. 1700 is good, but uh, not that good. Uh, my optimized uh, expectation should be around uh, 50, around the 50, uh, 50 percent uh, increase for small random write. Uh, but uh, right now I can see the, the, the number is between 60 to 17, and the in average it's a 17 percentage. And uh, the IO latency uh, decreased for around uh, 3,100. Uh, but I mean that uh, to testing the latency, I use different IO depths uh, from the testing for the IOPS. For the IOPS, to test the IOPS, I used uh, quite high IO depths, that's uh, 128. But for the testing the IO latency, I use uh, 16. The IO depths is 16. Yeah, so from the above data, the very uh, tricky hacking to put the metadata on MAD. We, we, we see that we, we do have a recognized performance improvement. But uh, but I I want to mention that to combine a linear MD device, the MAD is still in block layer interface. That is slow because uh, uh, finally the data transfer is uh, memory copy between the DRAM and the MAD. But the, the code need to go through all the generic block layer. So that is slow. And the DAX is much better, much better. And uh, uh, we also expected the boot time Bcache registration can be much faster. Uh, but we, we don't compare the kernel before uh, 5.9 because that, that means more than 50 minutes doesn't mean anything. So we use the, uh, I, I use the 5.9 kernel to test. Uh, that's uh, not that good as expected. The registration with MAD stored uh, the metadata. I only observe uh, five percent to ten percent faster. This is far below my expectation. I expected maybe I can observe uh, at least fifty percent faster. I guess maybe one of the reasons is uh, I use the MAD by the PMAM block device driver. It's not block interface. Uh, I mean, that's block interface. So to get better performance, we don't need 
block interface, we need a DAX. We need to access the medium area as memory uh, directly uh, do the memory copy on the medium area for the metadata. That should be faster. So current hacking, uh, there are several disadvantages for the current hacking to use the MD linear combination. The, one, the, the first is uh, the whole MDM namespace has to be exclusively assigned to a cache device. That means uh, if there are more cache devices and uh, this namespace is not fully uh, occupied, they cannot share the cache device. Another one is uh, I said uh, already, this is a block interface. We need uh, DAX. And also, MD linear device involved more complexity. And uh, the metadata and the cache data distribution hacking is very tricky and not perfect. Uh, when the, the B cache run longer and longer, uh, the control is weaker and weaker. But anyway, this is a good, uh, very good uh, POC for future direction. We can see that even the B cache is fast enough uh, using the not that large MAD to store the metadata for B cache. We can also gain recognized performance improvement even with the slow block layer driver. So the next step. If we uh, want to use MAD, indeed we, we, we start to work on it, we will use a DAX interface and uh, manage the MAD uh, like a pages pool. So this can make the MAD namespace be shared among different uh, uh, cache devices or different users. Uh, it should be more flexible. And uh, uh, if the, the, the pool is not fully occupied by one uh, Bcache device, uh, the MED pages can also be allocated for other kernel subsystem or users. So that's what we are doing right now. Uh, there are still many unknown challenges because so far the people are told to be more over to be over optimized for the performance of MD. But when we work on it, we find that sometimes it's not. So let's see what can be achieved next year here. I mean next year at the labs conference. So my talk is uh, finished. So any question? Thank you. Okay, thank you, Cody. That's quite fantastic. You stayed, uh, well, you not only stayed in time, you finished earlier. Um, much appreciated. And yet the content was quite good, at least according to me, even if uh, it's not my field. And uh, yeah, sure. Uh, any more questions uh, apart from the one that have been uh, asked uh, during the presentation? Oh yeah, Oliver. Oliver uh, asked, uh, "Do you still need a full journal if your B tree is on uh, MAD?" Uh, my answer is uh, uh, no, no. Uh, I will not. Uh, no or yes. I will not use a journal for B tree, but I will need a journal for the internal metadata to manage the MVD pages pool. Uh, so journal is still necessary. We just move it to a different location. Oliver. Thank you.
one question regarding the hardware. Uh, browsing the internet for uh, uh, NVDIM, I found that there are two similar products, but I'm not sure if they are the same thing. One is Intel Obtain uh, non-volatile memory. And then it seems to me there is also another class of NVDIM, which is NVDIM. So I'm not sure which is probably just the um, ram on battery or something like that like they, they this uh, this nv the second one is intel obtain and the other one is they need a battery i was browsing yeah. server so which one do you use and how are they different uh, uh, I, i'm very I, confused I, uh, okay uh i feel that uh, from the intel's uh white pages they call the uh, in general MVD means the DRAM plus a battery. And uh, what I use is the Intel's opt-in persistent memory. Uh, that that means uh, they use uh, very fast storage media and then no battery. Mm, that's it. So what I use is is something like this no battery just uh, faster storage media maybe oh, i might chime in here harness, um, harness. yes indeed that's yeah. me yeah. so um the nvidia initially just means non-volatile ram so anything which is non-volatile in principle it qualifies as nvidia um obtain is the brand name from intel which is this thing with thousands of name originally known as what 3d cross point then apache pass then something else what you name it so that's the intel make of um, nvidia's hpe did its own brand which essentially was as you said um just a battery backed um, normal ram and some logic behind it such that then the the contents of the RAM would be flushed out to an attached SSD up on power down. That's why you needed the, the, the cache for the battery for, because the battery was there was there to um, copy the contents of the RAM into the SSD. Um, while this was a nice and hackish solution and could be done with a relatively low effort, um, it doesn't really live up to the original idea of NVDIM, namely that the thing does scale. If you have to add normal NV normal RAM, I mean, that doesn't really scale better than normal RAM because, well, it is normal RAM. Um, the advantage of NVDIM is, of the Intel Obtain, is that you can get them in larger capacity than normal DIMMs. So as Cody said, um, there are currently um, 64 gig 128 gig and uh, 256 gig um, NVDIMM, well, um, DIMMs, so to speak. And um, they are planning on going to 512 gigs per DIMM. Um, but this is only for the next gener generation. That's the, what's that, CrowPass? I think CrowPass. So the third generation. The, um, first generation of the Apache Pass was only up to 200, 128, the second up to 256, and then the third go up yet another, yet another step higher. Um, but even that, yes, it does scale better than Nvidia, uh, the normal DIMMs, but not, not that much. Because, well, um, you easily get nowadays DIMM ranges of 64 gig. Not easily, but you get. Mm -hmm. In ranges of six for me. Um, meaning that NVDIM is giving you about twice the capacity than normal DIM, norm RAM. So it is really not the deal breaker which Intel which Intel has hoped. Plus, the other thing is that so far we're still struggling to find use cases for NVDIMs. So what is it you're actually wanting to use it for? So um, any of these newfangled use cases where you could use it as a normal memory but persistent simply goes completely against the current programming principles. 
So in the end, it's being used either as cheap RAM or as a fast storage. But in between, there are pff, virtually no use cases whatsoever. Yeah, we still have uh, a few more minutes uh, in case there are questions, of course. While we wait, uh, let me mention that uh, after this session, we will uh, jump back to the big blue button uh, public talks room uh, as uh, um, as before this talk. Okay, I, I, I think uh, time is out. Maybe. Yeah, um, pretty much. Um, yeah. They're fine, if they're, especially if there aren't any uh, more questions, then uh, thanks again, Koli, and uh, yeah, we're done. Giovanni, as you wish, you can stop, I guess. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your questions. Thank you for coming. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Bye.